Hey everyone and welcome to this little advanced looping guide by me. Um, if you are just interested in seeing the gameplay and not and don't want to listen to the stuff that I'm going to be talking about beforehand, then you are welcome to go ahead and skip to 14 minutes and 46 seconds. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just talk because we have a lot to talk about um, like kind of preemptively before we get into any sort of gameplay. Um, there are some few things I want to touch on firstly do I have what credits do I have what reason do you have you guys have to be watching my video right now basically nothing um, the only credits I have is being uh, in the high MMR and dead by daylight and I mean I have some coaching exper experience since before um, in League of Legends um, I was top 0.07 percent MMR peak um, which is pretty high. The high MMR in Dead by Daylight is very, very different. Uh, you might have heard of a soft cap and uh, high MMR. And also, let's talk about MMR first. Uh, MMR, if you don't know, stands for matchmaking rating, which basically determines what players you will be playing with and against. Uh, and what skill level they are on. It's a way to track for the game to track your skill level So they match you with players with equal skill levels So it doesn't you don't get unfair games and with Dead by Daylight They have a very low high MMR cap meaning that you don't have to win uh, a lot of games in order to reach high MMR someone who has like Maybe, I don't know, 500 hours in the game could be matched with someone with 10,000 hours in the game. And, like, they can be read like they have the same uh, skill level of the game, even though they might not really have it. But they still get matched because the high MMR, deter like, the high MMR determination is very low because... Uh, Dead by Daylight and Behavior, they don't want people to have to sit in queue for a long time because the more specific uh, you, your MMR matchmaking is, uh, the longer wait times there are for games. And Behavior don't want you to sit and wait for like three minutes to find a lobby. Uh, so instead, they have a very... Um, they're not super strict with the MMR matchmaking and stuff like that. There's also trackable MMR and hidden MMR. Uh, kind of speaks for itself. Trackable MMR is when you can see what MMR you are in, uh, which for most games you can't. Uh, instead, you get a visual like ranking of what rank you are in, but usually your rank is different from your MMR because you can have a lot lower or higher MMR than your actual rank. Uh, but there are websites, like for example, for League of Legends, you can't track your MMR, but there are uh, websites to have systems where they can track your MMR perfectly. Uh, and then you have hidden MMR, which is basically where there is really no way of you uh, knowing what MMR you are in, which is true in Dead by Daylight's case. And uh, the way to know if you are in high MMR or not, it's hard to determine uh, based on the players you play with. Like, someone can have high prestige and a lot of hours in the game, but still not be high MMR. Uh, so you can't trust that. I think the main way of knowing is if you get inside of lobbies with players who are, like, playing competitively in DBD, and if you play with players who are, like, really uh, high-skill-leveled content creators and stuff like that, uh, that's kind of the way to tell. Um, other than that, uh, this is going to be indirect coaching as well, uh, meaning that I'm not directly coaching a specific player, I'm just, like, teaching whoever is watching this. Um, meaning that it won't be super specific to how you maybe play and you won't maybe know how to improve your specific gameplay um, because like other than what I am saying basically. And uh, now we're going to talk a little bit about micro and macro because if you've noticed this is going to be a two-part series where in this video I'm going to be talking about micro, uh, micro gameplay and in the next video I'm going to be talking about macro gameplay. Those two things are heavily connected. You can't have one without the other and you have to be very good in both in order to like have a general like good gameplay and good knowledge of the game and there is something other that is kind of connected to the both uh, you have to have some good general knowledge before you start working on your micro and macro and that is something that is really really important but it's also difficult to learn uh, general knowledge of the game in my eyes in Dead by Daylight is knowing uh, essentially all perks and uh, knowing what all perks do uh, and then knowing all the killers, all of the killer perks, uh, because this is a survivor, uh, obviously, this is a survivor coaching. So you need to know all the killers, all their powers, and how 
uh, other killers are played. You might not have to play them the killers yourself, but at least know how their gameplay uh, looks like and feels like uh, by playing against it a lot and looking at uh, other people who are playing it, like streams and stuff like that, and then knowing all the killer perks, like I said, uh, but then also knowing how uh, tiles work uh, and what different tiles there are and how to um, how to spot them, basically. Uh, then you need to know every single map and their map layouts and, uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, other things to know how uh, niche things uh, work, such like, I don't know, uh, is kind of connected to the killer powers, obviously, but like nemesis, zombies, how they work, uh, how to play around them and stuff like that. Uh, maybe how to spread out your vaccines against Nemesis. That was also something um, with uh, Nemesis and specifically. Um, how stuff like uh, Nemesis tentacles work. They are pretty, like, they work in a pretty weird way. Um, maybe how uh, the logic behind looping a Blight or Nurse is compared to trying to loop a Wraith, for example. Uh, these are some things that you kind of... Uh, just general knowledge about the game that is really good to know before you start getting into like the specifics and the more difficult sides of actually playing the game and being able to like loop and stuff. This is just things that you learn the more you play. This is nothing that you like have to dedicate your uh, time to actually trying to learn. It will just come with experience. I'm gonna link uh, a great video that I think everyone should watch uh, if you don't understand uh, tiles. It's a video by Otstalva where he goes through every single tile in the game and explains them, but also explains some general knowledge on how you should approach them with looping. I don't believe in that personally. I don't believe uh, in a... Uh, I don't believe in like a script or a manual or like a schematic on how to loop a tile uh, because you can't just uh, you can't just loop the same tile the same way every single time you play a game um, because obviously you will have to adjust it based on what killer you're playing against, how good the player is, reading how the player plays, like do they double back a lot? Uh, do they not respect pallets? Do they respect pallets? Uh, and that's all the things that, like, micro is that I'm going to talk about a little bit um, in a second. Um, but I don't believe in, like, having a preemptive plan on how to loop because you have to adjust to the situations that you get put in. Um, and there isn't really a good and clear way to just, uh, like, have a pre-planned route to follow. But regardless, it is good knowledge to see how uh, you should approach looping them, because seeing a kind of uh, pre-plan, like he shows in the video, uh, of how people usually approach looping it, is going to be good for you, basically. So, now we're going to get into micro and macro. Macro is nothing we're going to talk about in this video. As I said, it's going to be uh, in the next video because it's going to be way too long to do it in both videos. Uh, macro is essentially uh, knowing the maps. It is uh, adjusting based on your teammates. It's adjusting based on your killer, uh, the killer positions. Uh, it's basically how you think during the game in order to get to the final objective. Uh, basically, micro and macro, you can hear, like, macro is, like, big, uh, micro is small. So, how you can think of, uh, of it as micro is the small stuff, is your personal stuff, your personal skill. Uh, um, during the game, basically how you loop when you're looping, um, just stuff like that, like stuff like hitting skill checks, stuff like healing, and macro is seeing the big picture of the game and what is happening during the game and how to adjust yourself based on uh, the stuff your teammates are doing and how the game plan is, what the game plan is, uh, what the game state is, and stuff like that. And micro, we're going to talk about uh, and touch on this video, which is basically what I said, like hitting skill checks uh, and being able to loop. That is the most important part of micro, being able to loop, because uh, that is is like obviously the more difficult part um, but it is definitely really important as well learning how to like do the basic skill checks and stuff like that so you don't overlook that stuff so how this is going to work is that I'm just gonna play a few games and I'm going to collect like a few clips of me looping and talking during it and just basically how I think and how you probably should think when doing this but some stuff that is good to know beforehand is look spots uh, a look spot is a spot on a 
loop where you stand still essentially and position your camera in a way where you will be able to see which way the killer is going without you being hit so instead of just running around the loop you stand still on a specific spot to try to see where the killer is going so you don't accidentally run into the killer and you continue running the killer in a way where you don't like accidentally run into them something else that is really good to know is uh, your movement has to be pretty good before you start getting into some advanced looping uh, you have to know your controls uh, like super instinctively uh, you have to understand how you can be in a loop getting chased by the killer without stressing out and how you do that is basically just pushing your limits uh, limits testing which is basically how far can I do this without getting killed or without getting hit and just doing that over and over again uh, and then just looping killers over over and over again until you like stop stressing out and when you do that you can think in the moment of your movement instead you can start thinking of uh, uh, the specifics when you're looping you can start like actually thinking of okay what am I going to do next because you're not stressing out um, and something else is knowing uh, like when you're looping a killer uh, being able to look uh, ahead of you and behind you uh, while looking at the killer. So you're positioning, you're tracking the killer uh, with your mouse. Uh, so you're constantly know where the killer is going. And at the same time, you don't run into random debris around the maps. Um, so basically look ahead of you, look behind you, uh, assess the situation. And at the same time, look at the killer and know exactly what they're like, where they're running, uh, where they're facing and stuff like that. These are all things that are like easy to explain for me. And I'm pretty quick on explaining them, uh, but they are really... There are they are more difficult than I make them seem, and they are more important than that. Uh, but I'm just giving you kind of a heads up on how you should analyze what is happening in the gameplay, and I'm going to try my best to actually explain the stuff and what I'm thinking uh, while it's happening. Anything else to know before that? I'm going to talk about the build. The build is really important. Um, this is going to be the build I'm going with, with this, which is Bond, Windows of Opportunity, and Fogwise. These three perks is something that I really, really recommend for beginners. Uh, they are really really good when you don't have the best sense of macro bond is going to give us uh, Information about our teammates where they are positioned This is important because we don't want to run the killer to our teammates when they're sitting and working on a generator We don't want to like slow them down by running the killer to that generator But also finding teammates that are injured and finding teammates to heal ourselves when we are injured as well Windows of opportunity a very very commonly used perk. Uh, it is great uh, no matter your skill level, you should use this uh, pretty often. Uh, see, you see um, window walls, you see pallets, and you see uh, breakable walls. Uh, it is really good to it's really good to plan your route on where you're going to loop. Fogwise is the best perk to track the killer. Uh, you could replace this with alert if you don't have access to this. Every time you hit a great skill check when you are repairing a generator, you see the aura of the killer uh, for six seconds, which is really good with learning how to track killers and where they are positioned. Then this is a perk of choice. Uh, use whatever you want here. Maybe use uh, something like Kindred. Use an exhaustion perk. I don't really like to use exhaustion perks when you're trying to learn looping because you get too reliant on them same with windows of opportunity but the thing is when you learn loops you can comfortably take off windows of opportunity anyways you're not going to rely too much on this uh, you're going to get used to not having it pretty quickly uh, but uh, yeah i'm using adrenaline just because it's a nice perk to use um and it can save you a lot of the times. Um, I could use something like open-handed here, increasing the aura reading of the bond and the windows. Like it's really useful. You can use something like hope, iron will, like just pick and choose. Like this last perk doesn't matter too much. These are the three core perks that I want everyone to try out. Um, they are all uh, free unlockable perks or well they're not free obviously uh, but they are not from licensed characters which is really important and really good because you can get bond without buying a character you have it on Dwight you can get windows when you have Kate and uh, Fogwise with Vittorio and they are all purchasable with uh, iridescent charts if you don't have any of these you can obviously like uh, try to figure out a build on your own but this is what I would recommend using and then and just 
do whatever you want with this. Uh, another thing that is important, does it matter what character you're playing? Of course, it doesn't at all matter who you're playing because uh, every survivor is the same. Um, but it is more satisfying to play a character that you like uh, with like a skin combination that you enjoy and, you know, uh, that just it just feels better to play a character that you yourself enjoy if you skipped past to this part that is fine um, but just remember that I touched on some pretty important subjects that is pretty good to know before you actually start getting into advanced looping but if you would rather just like analyze uh, my gameplay and understand uh, it from that then that is of course completely fine as well Okay, so one thing uh, before this is that I'm obviously not going to include me looping every single killer. Uh, but that's the thing with micro, you have to kind of go ahead and learn some stuff on your own as well. Um, but the thing is that it is not very difficult to understand and kind of learn yourself on how to loop specific killers. But obviously it's going to be insanely different looping every single killer based on uh, certain stuff. Like most likely I will not get footage of me playing against Trickster because uh, nobody really plays Trickster and stuff like that. But that is stuff that you you can go ahead and learn on yourself in your own games this isn't really going to be specific about certain killers and it's more going to be centered around like just looping in general so we're playing nemesis he's gonna go ahead and find me something you can do is um, go ahead and sit on a generator in the beginning of the game uh, and see if you can get a skill check to get fog wise proc and see uh, if you can find what killer you're playing so what I try to do there is fake drop the pallet to make him use his tentacle. I'm playing <laughs> really badly. I'm not gonna run him over there. I wanted to go outside, um, but my teammates are sitting there. Value of bond, and I see that he has bamboozle as well. Pretty good to know. I have to play this god pallet even though I don't really want to. I kind of need to. Oh my god. Okay, that was really, really horrible. He actually reached me. I didn't think he would reach me with tier 1 there. Uh, but yeah, that was just horrible. So that is an example of how terrible you can be looping sometimes. Uh, I have a million excuses for it, but I'm not going to use a single one. So that is some things that you can think about. Uh, looking around you, seeing where you should go and what pallets you should go to. But also seeing where you shouldn't go to, aka your teammates. And also seeing and also seeing the killer perk, because now I know that he has bamboozle, which can be good to know. This isn't a very window-heavy map, so it isn't that difficult for you to play against bamboozle here. But it's really good to understand and know what perks he is using anyways. So this is the wait spot to see if he's going to me or not because I was unsure uh, if he was actually going upstairs to get to the library. So playing against these wonderful zombies as we mentioned before it is always uh, amazing to do. Uh, a little bit of a macro tip that I'm going to give you in this video because I don't know if I will be able to do that in the macro video because I probably want to be playing against Nemesis. Uh, never use a vaccine until uh, there is one or two generators left or alternatively if you're death hook because uh, using those vaccines, uh, seeing survivor use those vaccines in the end game can be really really devastating while playing Nemesis I have noticed. Um, and it is really good, uh, but also if you are death hook, it can be really good and important to do that uh, to make sure that he can't, you know, uh, two shot you uh, with his tentacle. Apparently, his tentacle shows that he has devour hope for whatever reason. I did not know that. What? I always love playing against devour. So that is an example of a look spot. Uh, you can see that I can see where he is going. Uh, but obviously that is a really, really shit. This is both the shit look spot and the shit style to be actually trying to look for him on. Uh, and you could see why. He can easily double back and still get a hit. Uh, and that is just mind games. And playing micro is about uh, mind gaming and also understanding the killer's mind games. And trying to read them. Uh, which is really hard in a situation like that. Uh, especially because I haven't looped the killer really before, so I don't know if he is going to be mind gaming or not, and I can't tell uh, if he knows that I'm going to be mind gaming or not. I really don't know what is happening. <sighs> this is why you don't play. 
This is why you don't play Dead by Daylight early, I guess. Why did I get disconnected? Why does it say that I disconnected from the game? That's a lie. Early in the game, you can actually start off by uh, just looking around you uh, and trying to see where you have potential palace and loops to play. Something that's pretty good to know. Because it's just really good to know that stuff, um, so you don't get confused later in the game. But at the same time, it's not as, as it's not essential to the point where you will be needing to use uh, Windows every single game. Because you can do that without using Windows, really. So this is the thing about uh, tracking the killer and survivor. It is really hard for me right now to do that. I just know the general location of them. But that is kind of enough as well. I don't have to know the specific positions of them all the time. Uh, but just me knowing the general location of where the killer is can help me a lot. Especially when knowing where to run if the killer comes close. So the problem is I have nothing real to play here now. I just have this. And that is good uh, where it's good knowing uh, where your teammates are and where the killer is. Because with that information, I could have known that I shouldn't play around this area. So we got a few looks blocked. I can see him double backing a lot here. Knowing his hitboxes, we don't really have to worry there. Just leaving us here. This is also a wait spot, knowing if the killer is going to commit to us or not, so we don't waste time and distance. So we're hugging the wall there, so he can't hit us with the power. Not giving him any free hits. I think he hits me here. Yeah. That's pretty bad for us. So we have this little jungle gym here. Oh, it's a four lane actually. So that's a really dangerous look spot there. Make him vault it because he vaults pallets really slow. See him double back. I'm gonna continue running here. Gonna camp the pallets. Ah, he does reach that. He, I think he got bloodlust. I wasn't pla I wasn't thinking about that. That was really bad of me. We still kind of have to play around this side of the map because he's heavily protecting the three gen here. He doesn't have any tokens left of pain resonance. It's a free hit here. He actually holds his power really long there for some reason. I don't think it's gonna commit to me. He's probably gonna go hook. Never mind. So we're gonna do this. I was expecting him to respect that actually. Yes, he doesn't. He respected the pallet really heavily in the beginning and didn't respect the single pallet when I looped him earlier. Um, because I didn't drop it, so I was expecting him to maybe not respect it there. Or I was expecting him to respect it. It was a little odd. So that is just about, like, trying to read your opponent. Uh, and your opponent successfully reading you a lot better than you're reading them. How does he have tokens of pain rest left? What? Oh, probably because he didn't hook her on the scourge hook, I guess. No pop. I'm gonna let my teammates uh, focus on that generator and go do something else. I love Wesker, man. Absolutely love Wesker. We're gonna use this because his infection is broken. And his infection on you builds up during chase. So we're gonna have to do that. 
I have an adrenaline play coming in. I'm just gonna run away from him, really. I have extremely good placement of gates here. So we're just gonna go ahead and play Shaq. It is on the drop still. I don't think he has bamboozle. Can't be too sure though. So I'm gonna boot it to the other side of the map since we have the Ada camping the exit gates. Can see if we can get the other one open. F me, bro. She should have gone open to the gate, I feel like. Okay, I'm going opening the gate since she's not doing it. So that's a little bit of micro and macro because they do come hand in hand sometimes. Uh, I can see that it's a legion and because of that I'm going to move away from my teammates. Uh, it might be a um, never sleep pills legion, meaning that they have their power forever. Uh, and that is also something that is good with uh, micro, trying to learn... Uh, trying to read the killer's perks and add-ons. Uh, the reason I saw this is because the Legion didn't use her power when they saw my teammates uh, to get like quick distance and instead held onto the power. Because a lot of the time people who use Never Sleep Pills wait until they're really close uh, before they use their power. Which is... Uh, not what this legion is doing. Well, I can see that the legion is too fast to be using never sleep heals. Because it makes them really, really slow. So we're forcing a swing there, and then I don't want to vault that because it's an easy double back for the legion. Fucked up a little bit there. We see our teammate there, don't want to really run the legion there. To the teammate, even though I kind of have to because of this pallet. I'm gonna continue here, actually. It's a really bad pallet to play. So faking windows is a little bit difficult. It doesn't always work out, um, but a lot of the time it can work out, especially if you know how to correctly try to spin the uh, killer after that. And also knowing how to spin the killer uh, normally can be pretty difficult because you first have to fake a direction for to make the killer swing in that direction and then kind of spin around. Uh, it's all about like getting down good timing really. I do not like that this Kate is blindly following me here. I always gotta expect the Legion to... Uh, follow you. Probably gonna break that wall. Just gonna run around behind the main. So that's a dangerous read because the Legion could just not do what I just said that they would. Uh, maybe they just don't break that wall. Um, but the thing is, uh, I'm noticing how this killer is playing. It's not the best killer ever, so I'm not expecting him to be playing, doing plays like that. He didn't respect that pallet either. Fuck man, I fucked that up so bad. Yeah, we lost this game. This card chose to not unhook the Kate, so we kind of lose because of that. That is also like bad macro, this Claudette not understanding that she shouldn't be trying to make me wiggle off randomly and instead needs to focus on unhooking Kate. I don't think I even make this pallet. No, I don't. Anyways, I kind of felt like I had to uh, take that down for Ace because I don't want the Legion to have too much pressure. This Claudette and Kate is playing really weirdly and I don't trust them as much as I trust the uh, uh, Ace and I trust myself enough to know how to play on Deathhook and not sure how this Ace would play on Deathhook. So I just wanted to make sure 
uh, that I don't put my teammates in a bad spot and try to like prevent him from getting downed because of that reason. I unnecessarily missed that. Now, now I'm dead. Okay, that's really nice. This is why you need to learn how to hit skill checks, everyone. So I saw that the killer had corrupt intervention and saw that he spawned kind of here, so I know that this isn't going to be corrupted. That is something that can be important to know as well. A, l a bit more of macro tips, but as I said, they go hand in hand, and these are kind of specific things that I think that I won't be able to like replicate when I'm actually making the macro video. Uh, so I kind of wanted to, I want to bring light to some of those things as well in this video, actually as well to make you guys watch them both because I am going to do more micro stuff in the macro video. So um, yeah, go, <laughs> go subscribe, go to my channel, watch every single other video, and you will learn how to be the most perfect looper, just like me, like you've seen in the video so far. Of course, every single uh, game I have won, I have escaped every single one. Um, yeah, and you know, you know, like why would I even lie about something like that? The three minutes should be over for the uh, corrupt. At least it will be in a second. Also, moonwalking, uh, that is another, it's a secret little tip, try to learn how to moonwalk, there are a lot of good guys on how to moonwalk, uh, the thing with moonwalking is that it is pretty difficult, um, because you have to get some good, um, hand coordination, uh, hand and eye coordination, and also understanding the movement and positioning of your character, and also being able to control the moonwalk with your mouse, since it is based on where you are looking with your mouse. Uh, and that is uh, something that kind of warms you up to the movement, even though I'm not pulling it off very well right here. It can be kind of good to, like, practice your movement in general. And this is something that I found ex find extremely annoying. When people kind of carelessly uh, loop the killer around the hook and making it really difficult and unsafe to actually go and unhook her, uh, this Adam should have been able to position himself a lot better when he got shocked by the doctor um, in the uh, building. Uh, and, but instead he chose to stick to the generator and then started looping him around here. It would be super easy for the killer to force second stage for my teammate here. And that was really that was really weird. It could, have been, it could have put us in a really, really bad situation if the doctor decided that he wasn't going to... Uh, play nice and instead if you wanted to play to win that could have like lost us the entire game by Adam looping the killer there I know where Adam's generator is so I'm gonna do main generator uh, because that is going to prevent the three gen which is one of the most important parts of learning how to macro is actually to prevent three gens because that position is one that is going to be the hardest in the game to get out of. A big part of uh, learning and understanding the game and becoming better is also learning how to analyze yourself and your teammates and learning how to be extremely self-critical to the point where you can see yourself and how you're playing, know what you do wrong and improve from it and not blame stuff that isn't your fault on yourself and also not to blame stuff on your teammates that isn't really your teammates' faults and understand that Okay, you lost this game because you had a face camping Bubba at 5 gens and your last teammate focused on trying to like BM and troll the Bubba instead of doing gens, which made you like uh, get a 1 man escape or a 2 man escape instead of a 3 man escape. Uh, and like understanding those situations and knowing when to like put pressure on yourself and blame yourself and when to put pressure on your teammates and blame your three teammates but at the same time not using that as any ex excuse on why you played badly or why you lost the game instead of like s things that you actually could have improved better so here again we are getting uh, the killer ran to us by our teammates could have ended up really badly but luckily they didn't run uh, the killer too close to us this time and that is what I want uh, to prevent with Bond and want other people to try to prevent when they're using Bond. Uh, just preventing uh, running the killer to my teammates because that can actually ruin the game if they don't uh, get to uh, repair the generators and instead give information to the killer that they are close to finishing a generator. Meaning that the killer can slow down the game extremely uh, much by like patrolling that generator and kind of camping it. Which can have some pretty bad consequences for the team and for the game. There as well. Running the killer to me when she didn't have to. She should have understood that there is no chance that I have time to open that uh, gate before he comes there.
I never make this. No, they're not coming out to block or anything. Oh, the Ada trolled me as well. The Ada should have taken a hit. Yeah, my teammates can... Like, this is what I'm talking about. This game, my teammates f***ed up the game for me. And now, uh, instead of letting me try to escape, the Nia just ran out. Then let me try to unhook myself. So, this game, it kind of trolled by my teammates. Um, and kind of the reason why I died. But that doesn't ex excuse, uh, like, if I was looping the killer this game, which I weren't. Uh, I didn't get chased a single time. That doesn't excuse me uh, playing bad in those loops. And this was... It was on my teammates that um, I lost the game and they played <laughs> really poorly. But, like, in the end, I could have probably dropped that pallet to try to slow him down instead of just holding W and stuff like that. Just uh, try your best not to get tilted from stuff like that. And, you know, like, try to get used to people being pretty bad at the game. So this is an example of how we can just instantly sit on a generator. Usually you don't want to do that because of stuff like lethal pursuer and stuff and giving the killer like information on where you are sitting. Uh, but we want to do that to try to get our uh, fogwise off to see if we can find the killer, which we didn't have to in this case. And the RNG is sometimes really shit and you don't get to actually uh, get a skill check. The autodidact curse, you can call it if you want to. But yeah, like anytime you want a skill check, you'll never get it. And then something that's good to know is that there are a few killers uh, where you like know who you're playing against before you even see them. Uh, you have Onryo and uh, Skull Merchant. They both have around the portraits of the survivor. They have a kind of... Um, a black outline uh, on Andreos, there is kind of like lines through the middle, a little bit like the doctor uh, has lines. Uh, you can see faint lines in the middle of the black uh, circles around the survivor, um, the survivor portraits. Um, with Skull Merchant, instead, the edge of the circle has like some small circle ish circles around it uh, and that's the way you determine if you're playing a skull merchant or on real skull merchant has those little circles around uh, the portraits uh, the portrait black portrait black circle and only has small little lines uh, instead and then you have a dredge you can see uh, if you're able to lock a locker or not obviously it's pretty easy um, with the doctor you can usually hear him faintly use his power uh, like there uh, or in the beginning when he used his like big power, whatever it's called. Uh, you have Deathslinger, you can hear him uh, shooting his gun uh, if he's chasing a survivor uh, and you're not in his tear radius. You can hear his uh, kind of gunshots uh, from a distance. The same with Pyramid Head, you can hear him uh, like use his power. You can hear him when he's using his Trail of Torment. Then you have Freddy. Uh, with Freddy you can see that if you are about to fall asleep on the HUD as well, that's pretty easy to find out. With Nemesis and Wesker you can find a box uh, and you can see if you can open the box to see what vaccine you will find. Um, usually it's not worth it wasting that time uh, and still try to learn the different uh, tear radius from Nemesis or Wesker to try to uh, determine which one of it is that you're facing. You also have a Peg, she also has her boxes um, uh, that you can see, uh, you can tell uh, that you're playing as the Peg with those boxes obviously. And then you have Nurse in the beginning of the game, it is pretty easy to tell if you have a Nurse because usually they will blink uh, and you can hear her kind of screech whatever thing when she's blinking. Uh, and then obviously you have Terra Radiuses as well, like you can try to... Uh, uh, learn the, the different terror radiuses and how they sound like to try to determine what killer you're playing against. So my plan here is trying to put uh, some pressure on the doctor. Uh, to I thought he would actually camp that generator and start kicking it. Which is good. It's good trying to hold the uh, killer in one spot uh, during the whole game because then he loses map pressure, which is really important. Map pressure is something that I will talk more about uh, in the macro video as well. Yeah, it's not super important to learn instantly what killer you're playing against, but it could be useful. That's what Fogwise is good for as well. If you can't see um, what killer you're playing against, 
Uh, you can use Fogwise, and if you don't see the aura when you use Fogwise, you can know that you're playing against a Stealth Killer. Uh, so you're going to be playing against a Wraith, uh, uh, Ghostface, or Michael Myers. Uh, possibly something like an Andreo as well, but that you should be able to tell anyways. And uh, with other, like talking about killer abilities that you can hear, you can usually hear the click. You can usually hear the Wraith uncloak. Um, sometimes you can't, depending on what add-on uses. Uh, but it's just good information to have to know what you're up against and you can like play accordingly, you know. So we're gonna try to get away from our teammate here so we don't block her uh, looping and stuff. We're gonna pressure this gate, uh, trying to get him to stop chasing our teammate, which he isn't. So we can open the gate. So the plan there is we make the killer... <laughs> We try to make the killer know that we're going to open this gate and he can either choose to drop our teammates instead of getting a down uh, and going on us or he can just accept that I'm going to get the gate opened. And this is where Bond is good as well because if we need to take a protection hit for our teammates uh, on the gate, we know where our teammates are positioned. Something good that has uh, to do a lot with micro but also macro as well is uh, seeing where the gates uh, are when the last generator is finished but you can also walk around during the game to try to tell um, where they spawn. That was really bad for me. Really really bad for me but Thalita should have uh, gone to that pallet anyways. I don't know what my teammates are doing. That was really nice. That Serena block really weirded me out. I didn't think that would work, but apparently it did somehow. So right now we can't tell uh, what killer it is based on the few killers you can actually see instantly, which is, like I said, Skull Merchant. Uh, we can tell if it is an Onryo. Uh, we can tell if it is a... Um, what more do we have? We can instantly tell if it is a... Uh, Freddy, and it also depends on the add-ons, what the add-ons killers are using. With some add-ons we can tell, like it is Wesker for example, everyone starts infected, uh, and stuff like that. Uh, with a peg, she has an add-on that makes everyone start with a head trap. Waiting spot there as well. I don't have to run away just because the killer is close. Instead, I stare at the killer to see if the killer is actually going to commit to me. I have nowhere really to run now. I don't know why he's so fast. He might have the add-on where he gets quick when he gets revealed. He's going to break this wall, uh, but I'm going to just continue running here. Looks like it didn't. I think he vaulted it. I don't know why he played it like that. That was a little bit odd. I know that he's going to respect us, so we can make another loop from this. Never mind. We have to be really careful now since we're exposed. Okay. Uh, never mind. He did have bamboozle actually. So with that, I had that looking spot uh, where I could tell that he was going to uh, ba double back there. Um, some some look spots require you to camp the pallet, which was what I was doing right there, which is especially important on some killers, like me being exposed by Ghostface or when you're injured, for example. You kind of have to camp the pallet in order to get maximum safety, so you don't, you know, just randomly like get downed when you, in reality, shouldn't have gone down right there. I think that one of the most important things to do and to know is adjusting based on the killer. And, uh, like I said, how the killer is playing, but also with what add-ons. Uh, we can tell now that it is a stealth killer uh, that is in chase. I would guess that it is a Myers, possibly another ghost face. I'm not really sure. Uh, but if a killer sends you to, for example, this map, 9 times out of 10, it is going to be a, uh, a scratch mirror Myers, which is... A playstyle that is really difficult to play against, um, and it is okay. It <laughs> it's one of the most unique. Um, it's one of the most unique uh, kind of playstyles to play against, and you have to try to 
uh, adjust accordingly. But you also have to try to learn how to actually like play against that stuff on your own. Like just here, it's good for me to just pre-drop the pallet because we're playing as the Myers. Uh, he thinks I was going to double back there for some reason. But yeah, like a scratch mirror Myers, you have to like play a little bit differently than most killers. Um, especially because... Um, especially with how you're looking, like whenever you're repairing a generator, you have to constantly be like looking around you. Uh, and try to not... Uh, and try to not like uh, lose focus on stuff like that. And then the way you loop nurse and playing as nurse is going to be very different from other killers. And it's just being able to adjust uh, every game based on the killer's playstyle, the killer's build, uh, and you know what add-ons and uh, whatever. Like I know now that this Myers is going to double back a lot on loops. Which he was doing, but maybe not as much when tier 3. And when you know you're playing as a ghost face, you have to pay attention as well a lot. Um, when you play against a pig, uh, you should try to search... Uh, you should, should try to get your trap off before the... Uh, you should try to get it off before uh, a generator pops. Uh, you shouldn't wait until it's active. And the same with teammates. If you see a teammate that hasn't searched... Uh, searched uh, like a box and try to get the trap off and you are on a generator maybe wait until they have searched at least one box before you try to uh, before you try to before you pop the generator just give them a little bit of you know leeway into actually being able to get the head trap off and stuff like that that is both macro and micro it is macro because you know how to play against certain killers uh, but it's also macro because you know how to give your teammates the best opportunity to actually successfully play against that killer as well. Um, you may have noticed that I am either not bringing any items or just a brown medkit. There is no reason for this really, and you don't have to care too much about it. The reason that I do it is just because uh, I'm not thinking too much about it. You don't have to worry. Um, you don't have to think that... I fucked up a lot there. You don't have to think that I'm doing it for a specific reason. Like, maybe I'm not bringing an item because uh, it's, it changes the way you play the game. And it gives you a, an unfair advantage. And yeah, sure, like, bringing, bringing a brand new party is going to change the game drastically. Uh, and could, like... I could change it like a lot, but that's not the reason I'm not doing it. I'm just doing it because I don't really care about it um, right now. Uh, like I'm just gonna bring a brown medkit just, just because that's you know enough. I like being able to heal myself one time. Uh, sometimes I will use it to heal teammates and stuff like that. Just don't care too much about items. Bring whatever you want whenever you want to, f whenever you want it. Uh, don't stress out too much about that. Uh, I don't think that you're doing a bad thing by bringing a certain item or whatever. So right now this Claudette uh, wanted to let me heal myself uh, to not waste time, which is really good. I can go ahead and heal myself when Claudette can go around and do something else. Which she's not doing, but that is what's good with having a medkit. Just not wasting your teammates time on like healing you. So we see where the killer is going. Uh, if I hear the killer coming back here, we have this pallet and I can run in this direction. We have pallets and windows. It's just scoping out the area can be really good. And with some killers, it's going to be more important than others. With Nurse, you don't really have to care at all. Nurse is all about improvising. Uh, playing against a Myers though and other like exposed killers uh, requires you to look around a lot. I know that he's after me even though I can't, or I'm not looking at him. Um, and the way I can tell that he is, uh, is because uh, I am hearing his terror radius. Which is really, really, really low in tier 2. I get hit here, never mind. Uh, his terror radius is really, really low in tier 2. Uh, and if I continue hearing it, it means that he is pretty close to me usually. So I'm just gonna try to run around here. He probably dropped me. Not entirely sure, but most likely he did. My teammates are doing really, really well with spreading out generators. 
Mm, I think I want to go to the Ash Generator. Oh, the Claudette actually got pushed off hers. Which is good, and that's why you need to split up on generators. Most people don't like doing that in the mid game and in the late game, but it can be really good. We are we were on three different generators, uh, and one of us got pushed off of our generators, but we still have two generators going, meaning that most likely we will be able to finish uh, these two generators. Instead, if we were on two separate generators, two people would have gotten pushed off of their generator, and we still wouldn't have any pressure on, like... Uh, any other generators, which we do now, which is really, really good. So on certain maps, it's more important to actually look for the exit gates. Uh, like this one, I should have looked where the other exit gate was. I guess I might get confused on how to find it. But that's also, that's macro, like knowing the maps. I know uh, that the uh, exit gates spawn in three different ways. Either the exit gates spawn on the same kind of wall. Because you have four different walls on this map, you know. Uh, and most often it spawns on the same wall, or not most often, all of the time the two exit gates spawn on the same wall uh, or on opposite walls of each other or they spawn to... Uh, I don't know how to... How do you call that? They spawn on walls that are next to each other. So either the gates, they spawn like this, they spawn like this, or they spawn kind of like... Wait, you can't see that. Wait, I'm stupid. Okay. <laughs> either... Wait, let's say we have, this is our this is our gates. On this map, they either spawn like this, they spawn like uh, this, or they spawn like this. So this is one wall, this is one wall, and then we have a wall up here and a wall up here. They either spawn like this, they spawn like this, or like this. So it's not very difficult to know, uh, but it, it's because there's not many there's not many variations on that specific map, but it is still. But it can still be crucial to kind of see where the gate spawns because then you won't have to guess uh, where they will, the exit gate will spawn on that map. And on other maps, it is it is basically just complete RNG uh, on how close or far away the gates will spawn to each other. Something that is important to learn and understand as well is learning how to use flashlights correctly. There, you can probably find guides on it and stuff like that. Uh, but knowing how to utilize uh, every single item to its best possibility, including keys and maps which you should never bring in the first place, uh, it is still really good to understand that. But understanding how to blind a killer uh, in a good way, and especially with flashlight saves, is really, really important to know and can be the difference between between winning and, lo and losing a game. And that is where the limit testing comes in that I was talking about before. Trying to uh, get into a game, uh, multiple games in a row with a flashlight and trying to understand how long it takes to blind the killer. Uh, and try to greet as many flashlight saves as possible, blinding on every single pallet and every single window that they vault, you know, stuff like that. Try to do that, uh, and that will most likely help you uh, understanding how to use flashlights. Not just use them, uh, because that is, you know, like a different thing, uh, but understanding the timing of them uh, and how to pull it off correctly, that is like the most important thing, really, with flashlights. So I can hear that this is a unique tear radius, it's not the base tear radius, but I don't know <laughs> what tear radius it is. I haven't spent time trying to learn that. And now our perks are completely useless because of Fearmonger. We can never use Fogwise. Uh, bond and windows is going to be useful when we are in chase, but not otherwise. So that's really nice. Oh, it's a blight. I love looping blights. And that's the reason. Uh, my best tip on looping blights is faking directions uh, and trying to make them swing in a way. Because blight's hitbox gets in like their... The weapon hitbox gets extremely narrow when they are actually swinging in their power. Uh, so we can utilize that uh, by making him swing in a direction and then moving the other direction to try to like avoid the attack completely. That's the best way to try to loop a blight. But don't do it too often because it will be, you know, easy for the blight to read after a while. Wait, I'm drinking coffee. Wait! I was drinking coffee. Okay. I tried to uh, avoid his attack there in a good way, but he pulled it off really good. I uh, would have ran to my teammates if I didn't have Bond, so that's something good. I think it's a new blight. He doesn't. It seems like he's trying uh, overly much to hog tuck and stuff, so I think he hasn't fully learned it. Ugh, that f***ing 180 was disgusting, though. I wasn't expecting that.
Okay, Nia, thank you very much. Whoa, look at this sky. I haven't noticed this on this map. Whoa. Sorry. I'm a little bit like that sometimes. Even though um, he has Fearmonger and my Windows doesn't work, I still know uh, places I can run to. Where Nia is right now, where I got down before, I know I have a pallet. I saw a pallet behind here and I still have main and we have the main window. And I have this Feng Min, which is a little bit of an interesting player. Lovely, lovely. Uh, that could have worked out if he uh, launched a little bit, but he didn't. He played that really well. So I'm gonna go unhook. Uh, this is a th bad thing as well. The Feng Min looks like she's running the killer to the hook. Luckily, he decided to go on the Michaela instead. Like, if Nia decided to just heal me, she could have used her syringe. Her anti-hemorrhage syringe on herself now, and that would have saved us a lot of time. I think she has inner healing, maybe. Uh, we need to kind of play this, but we have to not greet it too much. Greeting a pallet means that you're uh, staying around the pallet for a long time without dropping it. And I don't want to do that. And instead I want to focus on getting to the next pallet. Uh, I tried to fake it there again, but I ran into a wall. That's why I have to pay attention uh, ahead of you and behind you to see uh, that you don't accidentally run into stuff. Uh, I could have faked that pretty well uh, if I didn't run into the wall there. Because if I uh, broke off to the right a little bit earlier, uh, most likely he would have launched a lot earlier. But since he didn't launch that early, he still could hit me even though I even though I made him swing in the wrong direction. I haven't paid attention too much to the generators, but I think we have the main one left at least. Which is usually a pretty safe uh, generator to do on this map. Okay, it is actually finished already. Let's see if uh, we have House of Pain gen done. Sounds like it. It's really hard to tell unless you actually go downstairs or there. Seems like we might be 3 gen I'm just gonna play around his power here. I know that he doesn't have um, any add-ons that give him more dashes. Uh, so I can kind of just play around him, um, wasting all of his dashes. Like playing around an object like this, uh, like I was doing there, without letting him uh, actually get an angle in where he can actually uh, dash and launch and hit me is uh, a good idea usually. But it depends on the skill level of the Blight as well, because a lot of them can play around it. So, take it with a little bit of a grain of salt playing like that. Right here, I know that we have no palace really, but we have two windows in main. He hasn't broken uh, all the walls, if any. So they are pretty fine and pretty good, anyways. The thing we want to do here is try to pre-run. Anytime we, see we can hear him getting closer, we should run away. Uh, a little bit to make him think that there is only one person on this gen because if we run away uh, Before he sees us then he sees Michaela on this generator She runs away and he starts chasing the Michaela What will happen is that he might think that there is only one uh, survivor on this generator Good players will not get affected by this because they will understand that one player wouldn't be able to get that much progress on their own uh, but what can happen is that Mikaela can chase him away while I sit and finish the generator. But obviously that's risky as well, because what he could do is scare her away and then look around the generator to find uh, me sitting there, which could have been really bad for us. But yeah, sometimes uh, this game is a little bit give and take, you know. Why did she become broken? Is this... Uh I think this is Terminus, whatever that perk is called. No? Oh, she used um, she used the thing, the Renato perk. I ran a little bit too slow. I should have ran a lot quicker there. I don't run him to the gate. I see someone at the gate to open it for me. So I don't have to stress too much. I can just play around this. I know he doesn't have no it either.
Actually, now I want to talk about map offerings. I saw a, an Ormond map offering, and for those of you who don't know, because I don't know why anyone would know this, Ormond is one of my favorite maps alongside Dead Dogs, Dead Dog Saloon and RPD. Uh, something you can do is definitely use map offerings to try to uh, learn looping better, uh, especially with indoor maps because they are different layouts and they work differently than um, other. Uh, maps do uh, but I would refrain from using map offerings too much uh, the only th reason you should use map offerings is to try to get maps that you haven't played in a while uh, like for example if you're trying to learn how to loop and you, you never play like midwitch for example uh, maybe you use a midwitch offering in order uh, to actually learn how to loop on that specific map uh, me personally I am heavily strongly against uh, map offerings I really don't like using them I don't like when other people use them uh, I and although I understand it especially if you are playing and trying to win uh, as a four-man squad they usually use a lot of map offerings to get favorable maps and stuff like that uh, which I understand uh, and the RNG in this game with uh, getting maps is really really horrible you can go like five maps in a row uh, five well let's not take maybe 30 you can go 30 games in a row and only get like five different maps uh, because the RNG works uh, in a very bad way uh, when it comes to uh, the maps you get to play. Um, so using map offerings isn't, you know, the worst thing in the world. But I personally, uh, I don't like uh, when people use them or like using them. Because the RNG element in this game is pretty important. And learning how to adjust can be good. But it isn't really that um, big of a deal. We're just talking about what map you will be playing. Um, but when it's connected to learning how to loop, maybe try to use a map offering if you want to. But, you know, I wouldn't recommend it too, too much. Uh, but, you know, do whatever you want to. It's, like, not the end of the world. This Blight is playing very, very weird, by the way. Now I'm gonna use Bond to see if I can find a teammate to heal me. Which is also using your perks to a micro advantage. Um, micro isn't only about, you know, knowing how to loop and knowing how to use uh, tiles and your items. It is also about utilizing your perks to its... Maximum potential, basically. And now the Kate is running the killer toward me, which isn't very good. If she had bonds, she probably wouldn't have. Uh, I might go down here because of that. I don't want to run to the hook, but I have nowhere else to run, really. Yeah, now I did the exact same thing I was complaining about. But sometimes... Um, sometimes you do uh, have to do stuff that is bad. The difference in that situation is information. Kate didn't uh, probably have the information that I was around this place. Uh, whereas I had information that I was uh, running toward my teammates. But at the same time, there wasn't too much I could have done. My teammates love greeting that pallet and getting down there, by the way. And this Kate loves failing, <laughs> saving them from it. Pretty nice combo. I don't have anything good to play here, bro. Oh, I play that so, so, so badly. I could have dropped the pallet stun him there, but I kind of don't want to do that. I also want to talk about positioning on a generator, uh, which I want, which I will do whenever I am on a generator. I got stuck there in the snow. The hitbox kind of. Um, messed up with me there it kind of messed me up a little bit I was expecting to be able to hug it that uh, as tightly as I was trying to she can st oh, yeah she gets this wasting pallets is something that I see people do a lot like, I could have dropped that pallet. I've seen people who would have dropped the pallet in that situation when Kate got hit, when there is really no reason whatsoever to actually do that. Ah, oh, I thought he would actually go to the right there. I tried to fake it, but I fucked up a lot. Me looping him well there would probably save uh, Kate from being hooked. Or, I meant, not save Kate from being hooked, but save us both from being hooked. Uh, which is really bad, because now our teammates have to focus all of their energy and time on unhooking both of us instead of sitting doing generators and whatnot. 
They're playing it really well, though. Well, that was really, really close. Thought he would try to commit to Yui there, but he didn't. I don't know if Aspen Boop's still to this point, so I'm just gonna camp that pallet. I make it to that, uh, and probably to God as well. I'm gonna let my teammates take the chase here, which they probably will. Oh, he saw me here now, though, so I have to continue running. Uh, I know he is on the Kate, so I can get to the Yui here. See if she can heal me. Unless not. I don't know what this bite is doing, and everyone is playing around me. Well, this is really bad for us. I think the plan we do here is this blight is gonna patrol them. Uh, what we do is me and Felix stand on hooking her. Never mind. I was making up a plan that didn't really work out in the end. Okay, well, we can do that as well, I guess. Question is if he goes Felix, no. Felix has to kind of chase after the Yui here because she's death hook and injured. Um, okay, that was not. Yeah, I'm gonna take it down for her here. Okay, nice. This is... Sometimes Dead by Daylight just works in such a stupid way, bro. Like, he's able to hook her there. For whatever reason. Okay, he gets that. Yeah, that was really bad of me. We're gonna go on the outside of this. Yeah. He was walking a really long way around. So I want to create as much distance as possible. I can continue playing around this until it breaks out. What? I don't know why I couldn't blind him there. Shit, man. I don't know where she is going. We really, 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 really have to reset. She's wasting too much time. If Felix uh, didn't get down, we could have probably gone to a generator and started working on it. But since he get, got down, we really need to reset. And she just wasted so much time running away that we could have spent healing. Thing is, he did patrol to the hook, though. So it wasn't the worst thing in the world, but it really didn't do too much. Yeah, so I want to talk about positioning on the generator. Usually you want to sit on the edges of the generator, the short side of the generator, like I'm doing here. Because usually, in most cases, I don't think it's really on this generator right here, but in most cases you can see a lot more of the map and also see the ways, the positioning of the killer, where the killer might be coming from by... the position that the killer is coming from by doing this. But in this generator, it's better to sit here compared to sitting on the short side, on the edge. Um, because I will still have distance uh, to the pallets. And I have a more clear way of seeing the whole map. The thing is though, if I sit on this side, usually the short side gives you uh, the most... The quickest way of getting to safety on a window or a pallet. And also usually makes you be able to see around certain loops and stuff. Uh, and see the killer and where they're coming from. So it's not all the time that that applies. But a lot of the time it actually does apply. If you want to know what I'm doing between games right now. I'm sitting here watching the weather. Isn't this interesting? Look, this is... The, wait, the, wait, wait. Oh, they showed at 2 p.m.? 2 p.m. on Wednesday, which is tomorrow, it's going to be 23 degrees outside. Holy damn. I mean, okay, it is the 23rd of May, 24th of May tomorrow, so, like, it makes sense. It would be warm, but still, you know. 24 degrees. That was, like, the warmest day of the summer here, where I live, like, 10 years ago. Okay, I'm getting old. <laughs> So obviously there we could tell that it was a huntress because we heard her lullaby. 
Uh, turn on uh, visual harpy, by the way. Uh, everyone should do that. Uh, accessibility, harpy visual support. We can see. I am in the range of her lullaby, but not uh, the range of her tear radius. And we can tell that by looking um, looking that. We can see a red spot, but it, we are not in her tear radius because we have no heartbeat. And the same goes for uh, Onryo and Trickster, both of them which uses, or not uses, but they both have lullabies. Um, but they are really, really low and not as uh, obvious as Huntress's is. So accessibility options with the heartbeat, visual heartbeat, can actually help you a lot. Uh, knowing how close the killer is with that. Okay, this Huntress is not that good with her aim. We can tell from that. That one shot. She hooked him upstairs, so I'm gonna go upstairs. Because a lot of the time, the killer will go downstairs on this map whenever they've been upstairs for a bit. Like that. But she didn't really do it, but she could have. I wanna bait her out. Okay, yeah. I have to hug that really tightly so she doesn't get her hatchet off there. Okay, she vaults that actually. Okay. Uh, really bad by me. There, I wasn't looking at her. Sometimes you don't really have to look at the killer in the chase, um, especially when it comes to someone like Huntress, where you want to mine the game pallets uh, and you know around corners and stuff like that to bait her out her hatchets. I could do that without looking at um, looking at her. Uh, just based off of, you know, you saw how I tried to dodge the hatchet there. Uh, I didn't really have to look at her to try to do that dodge. Because no matter what, she could have, like, held her hatchet, been patient and not throw it at all. And still hit me. But no matter what, I still have to fake that. Because if I don't, I 100% take a hit. So I have to take the 50-50. The 50-50 being either take a hit... Uh, or not take a hit, but that doesn't mean that there is a 50% chance that I won't go down Because if the Huntress is used patient enough, she just waits it out until I am like Bottlenecked where I can't dodge her hatchet and when she until she throws she didn't do that uh, right there uh, She should have um, And if she did she wouldn't have the 50-50 because that shouldn't be a 50-50 for her, it should just be a 50-50 for me. If she's just patient, which is the number one tip on how to play pa uh, Huntress, just be patient. If she uh, just held her hatchet until I am bottlenecked, bottlenecked meaning that I can't do go left or right and that I will take a hit no matter what, um, I will go down. So I will basically almost always go down no matter what, it just depends on how uh, the skill level of the Huntress is. There, well, I was playing around with... Uh, Hitbox there. Um, the best thing to do there was probably to break off to the left because of how survivor hitboxes work. Uh, it's hard to explain, but the hitbox is basically a little bit behind me, uh, which is why it looked like it shouldn't have hit me, but it still hits me. Uh, that combined with lag creates insanely weird Huntress hitboxes sometimes. Um, but I had my back positioned in a way where she could have easily like, hit me, and she did as well. So, the logical thing here would go to open that gate. Um, I'm going to uh, think, and uh, that I'm going to think that that's what the Huntress is thinking. So, most likely she's going through. She's going through below me or upside there, outside to the back, um, to the back gate because she isn't, she didn't camp me. So, I'm guessing she won't camp this. I might be wrong though. Yeah, I was thinking she might expect us to go uh, to the back gate. So we want to pressure this so our teammate can try to unhook our other teammates. Oh, the Nia should have been quicker there to unhook. I can't get this now just because I'm injured. Yeah, we can't really do anything here. Uh, depends though. She should just sh uh, force us out. <laughs> nice! Oh my god! 
That was one centimeter off. Yeah, that was really fucking dangerous. I mean, one hour, 14 minutes and 20 seconds later, and you're still here. It's pretty amazing. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, it was a lot longer than I thought it was. I talked a lot more than I remember <laughs> doing during the games. Um, but I hope this was actually uh, somehow um useful for you this is not the last one i will make as i said i would make one uh, about macro as well and i'm going to be bringing in some micro things in that as well and then in the future i will talk more about stuff like this the usability of this video will mostly be centered around um like learning yourself by analyzing someone else's gameplay and also trying to like understand uh what goes kind of through my mind whenever i am playing um but also just getting stuff um that can be important to know uh like in the beginning of the video i did kind of quickly roll over a lot of things uh but they are some of them are really important and is really really useful for you to know in order to actually get uh, a lot better in the game uh something something simple as just like learning all the perks or testing your limits and whatever can be the difference between you like improving uh, and being in a standstill so use uh, this video however you want it to uh, and i hope you find some success with um, like going through the stuff that i was talking about and i hope to see you in the future um with the other video that i will make with macro that is part of this like two-part series but also um look uh, ahead in the future for uh, videos like this. I do like teaching people. Uh, I'm planning on doing some actual like in-game actual coaching of uh, people of other players. Uh, so if you're interested in that, uh, make sure to stick around to see if I ever upload something like that, which I, I mean, I will upload it. I just don't know when I will take the time and make the time to actually start like coaching people and stuff like that. I might be doing some more, um, beginner or intermediate guides as well since this is mainly for people who understand uh, a lot of the game to like actually be able to anal analyze it well um but anyways i hope uh, you enjoyed watching it uh, you're pretty insane crazy for watching this whole video if you managed to get through it all uh, but yeah i hope to see you again in the future